In this video, I set out to breathe new life into a Dell Latitude 6420, a machine that once commanded a price of $850 at launch. Now, it feels outdated and unusable with any version of Windows. My goal is to see if it can still be useful. To achieve this, I plan to install an alternative operating system that doesn't require any additional investment. My goal is to restore its usefulness and demonstrate that, even after 13 years, this laptop can still deliver solid performance. After conducting research, I concluded that Linux Mint 22 is the best option. This distribution is renowned for its lightweight and optimized environment, making it ideal for low-resource computers. Additionally, it benefits from an active community and guaranteed support until 2029, ensuring that any issues can be resolved swiftly. To begin, I head to the official Linux Mint website, linuxmint.com. I navigate to the download section and find three desktop environment options, Cinnamon, XFCE, and Mate. After considering my choices, I decide on Cinnamon, which is 2.7 gigabytes. Before proceeding, I plan to skim through the installation guide to make sure there are no steps I might overlook. Once I've reviewed it, I'll download the ISO from a mirror, preferably one in my country or a nearby location, as recommended by a forum to avoid any potential issues. Once I've downloaded the Linux Mint ISO file, my next task is to create a bootable USB that will serve as the installation medium for the operating system. For this, I'll use popular tools like Balina Etcha or Rufus, which are reliable for flashing ISO images onto USB drives. After preparing the USB, I'll need to restart the computer and enter the BIOS to set it to boot from the USB, allowing the Linux Mint installation to begin. The installation process for Linux Mint is quite simple and follows the typical procedure of any operating system. There's nothing unusual or different about it. It runs smoothly and automatically. Best of all, it doesn't take long, just about 4 to 5 minutes as Linux Mint has a relatively small footprint. As soon as the system starts from the USB drive, we are greeted by the Linux Mint installer. We select the installation option and proceed step by step. We choose the language, set the keyboard layout, and pick the installation type that suits our needs, laying the groundwork for our system configuration. The first thing I noticed was how seamlessly everything worked right out of the box. The touchpad responded smoothly, the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connected without a hitch, and there was no need for any reinstallation or manual adjustments. Everything was perfectly functional. Before moving on, we'll restart the computer to see how it boots. Once it rebooted, I was amazed. I couldn't remember the last time it felt this fast. Now, with the final setup step ahead, we'll install the necessary drivers to ensure the hardware runs smoothly. Fortunately, Linux Mint makes this easy with its user-friendly update manager. Right from the beginning, the system felt completely functional. The speed was impressive, even while running directly from the USB drive. What stood out the most was the sheer amount of customization available. From changing the wallpaper to modifying the taskbar and icons, nearly every aspect could be tailored. With hundreds of design and customization choices, it can be a bit overwhelming but also incredibly exciting. The system comes with all the essential pre-installed apps you need. LibreOffice is fully installed, so you can start writing documents, creating presentations, or using spreadsheets from day one. There are also both standard and graphing calculators, along with a range of audio applications. Mozilla Firefox is ready to go, and I had no trouble installing Chrome or Spotify. One of the standout features of this operating system is its App Store. It's highly functional and user-friendly, offering complete repositories and hundreds of available applications. The ease of finding and installing software makes it incredibly practical. The system has a familiar feel, resembling Windows in aspects that users appreciate, yet it retains the distinctive essence of Linux. This balance makes it perfect for anyone looking for an alternative operating system, or hoping to breathe new life into an older PC without a complicated or tedious process. Right from the start, the installation process left me impressed. It was quick and hassle-free, a well-deserved 10 for Linux. When I first logged in, I was surprised at how smoothly the system adapted to my older hardware, earning it another perfect 10. The interface was simple yet efficient, running much faster than my experiences with Windows. While I'd rate its simplicity an 8, the performance undeniably deserves a 10. To improve the user experience on the resource-limited Dell Latitude, we'll start with some key optimizations. By turning off unnecessary visual effects, we can lower memory and CPU usage. Adjusting the power settings will also help extend battery life. To make the system complete, we can add essential software such as editing programs, lightweight web browsers, and an office suite. This way, the laptop will be transformed into a fully functional and efficient system. If you prefer, you can install Google Chrome without worrying about performance, even though it's not the most efficient browser on the market. Personally, I lean towards Firefox, which comes pre-installed and performs wonderfully even when opening multiple tabs or watching YouTube videos. You'll be able to enjoy many games without any issues, but the performance will depend on the specific requirements of each game. Steam, the most well-known gaming platform, is designed to run most games, but not all will be fully compatible, which could lead to performance issues or problems with execution. I need to pause for a moment and be honest. Switching from Windows to Linux Mint 22 has been a breath of fresh air.
My computer, which barely ran Windows 10, now feels much more agile and efficient. Sure, it's not a powerhouse for gaming or heavy programs, but for tasks like web browsing, working with Word and Excel documents, or even doing some light editing, it works without any issues. Some games run well, though not all, but the performance difference is night and day, restoring the functionality I thought was lost. If you're using your computer for personal tasks like watching videos, listening to music, or doing work for school or your job, Linux Mint is a great option. However, if you're into advanced editing or gaming and want to push your system for every frame per second, the operating system's improvements won't be enough. To really see a performance boost in these areas, you'll need to invest in more powerful hardware like a graphics card and a processor that can meet those demands. Linux Mint is highly recommended for older systems with low performance. While it may seem like a challenging change at first, it has shown me that it's worth exploring new possibilities. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments about other operating systems you think are worth trying. I'll be testing them in the next video, which you can watch here once it's ready.